simplify it down, transition is about change, but it would be quite a huge change or possibly a traumatic change. So maybe you have received a redundancy. Um, so to be coached during that. So I would work with a, with a lot of large clients uh, if they're going through a reduction in force. Four years ago, I got a virus in the brain, a viral encephalitis. It's like a, a form of meningitis, so to speak. And that took me out of work. Uh, that was hit and miss. I was very, very sick. A good 18 month recovery, 12 months of that being at home. The advantages of, I like to call it the lock in time, you know, rather than lockdown. It's a, a lock in sounds far more appeasing. But it's, it's been one of the, the big, we're stuck in front of screens and midnight last night I was, uh, I'm part of the WBEX, it's the World Business Executive Coaching Summit and we have these implementation mastery sessions and there was somebody from, there's two from California, one from uh, the Philippines and Italy, um, so I would not have had time to do any of this niche and I think the entrepreneurial mindset or innovative mindset for me entrepreneur is all about the mindset it's not about setting up a business or taking a risk or making a profit it's that type of creative willing to go through change and put themselves out there get some mentoring um, that would probably be the first thing to do De depending in what context we're, we're at now and what age bracket we're in as well um, but knowledge is key and you may have a great idea and you may have massive strengths in certain areas but then you might be able to tick all of those boxes so there could be some blind spots or weaknesses I do I do try to switch off it's I was really good at it pre-COVID. Uh, during COVID, I, I've lost the ability to switch off. Sometimes we've got to dig deep and find our passion, find what works for us. Sometimes it's not all about winning, but certainly it's about that experience. For us, it's all about winning that experience. On today's show, I get the opportunity to talk to Laura Connell. Laura is a professional coach in business and career and specializes in transition coaching and coaching psychology. She's also founder of Cork Entrepreneur Network. This is going to be a great show and one that I'm really looking forward to. Okay, so welcome to this week's uh, Always Winning uh, Experience. I'm uh, your host, Jason Kenny, and this week we're going to speak to Laura Connell, hailing from Cork, one of Cork's major entrepreneurs and business ladies. This lady is super, super experienced in all this area, and it's going to be an awesome podcast. So you got to hear this one out. So, Laura, a quick no elevator pressure. speech. What is it? Well, who is Laura O'Connell? After that intro, oh my goodness. Can I just hang on a second? <laughs> the um, yeah, so I'm based in Cork City. I am a professional business and career coach, and I specialize in transition coaching and coaching psychology. Most people in Cork would know me for setting up the, the Cork Entrepreneurs Network. And yeah, I am just hugely passionate about entrepreneurial mindsets and innovative mindsets and love working with those types of mindsets as well. So that's me from a business point of view. I also teach the Start Your Own Business course. I have a few hats which have served me well as well during these times. Um, sure, we can go into those. In, yeah, uh, absolutely. Like, uh, just, just tell me a small bit about this uh, transitioning coaching. What, what exactly is that for, for people to understand? Sure, yeah, to kind of simplify it down, transition is about change, but it would be quite a huge change or possibly a traumatic change. So maybe you have received a redundancy. Um, so to be coached during that, so I would work with a, with a lot of large clients. Uh, if they're going through a reduction in force, I would transition them into the next step. Now that could be a career progression, it could be a career step back, it could be setting up a business. It could be retirement. So that's probably the best way to describe transition coaching. But yeah. Transition, as you know, is mostly about change. 
Yeah, I can see so as well where some of the psychology of all this will come in. Um, there's obviously a, a nice link between the two. There is, yeah. I went back this year to UCC to do my H. Dippin coaching psychology. So uh, I was the more that I was getting into coaching, the more I, the more curious that I became and, and more interested about the mind and the brain and the psychology and all of that. So I wanted to kind of go back and really sort of get a good foundation for the methodologies, the approaches. Um, you know, and how best to support my own coaching practice as well. But um, mm. I love all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's intriguing. And the mind certainly is an intriguing area, no matter what aspects of a, a career you're involved in. Even in my own, I, I find it's the most intriguing area and just understanding the psychology behind things. But yeah, 100%. And what did you do before all of this, uh, Laura? So yeah, that's a great question. Uh, before all of this, uh, so I grew up in a family business and then I set off to do music and after I worked really hard to get into UCC I decided after just one turn I don't like this so I guess um, that that inner voice was talking to me about where is this really going this was probably my first sort of a coaching session <coughs> excuse me so I kind of said okay stability structure what can I do so I left college and I went back out working full time and I did business studies then by night time to get a good grasp of business studies. So I got my degree in that. So then that led into about 20 years of corporate experience and corporate work. So HR management, credit control, accounts, finances, uh, business development management. Um, so that really is what my last 25 years have been about. And four years ago, I got a virus in the brain, a viral encephalitis. It's like a, it's a form of meningitis, so to speak. And that took me out of work. Uh, that was hit and miss. I was very, very sick. A good 18 month recovery, 12 months of that being at home, going from bed to couch, a very slow recovery, months and months of medication, antibiotics, antivirals, all those, uh, all those sort of things. However, I'm actually glad it happened because in hindsight, where was my quality of life? I was working around the clock. I am a lone parent to Ben, who is now 16. And at that age, he was 12. And I just got one of those moments of, oh my goodness, how is he 12? So as much I would have been as tried as best to be there for him at matches and sports, I was actually in the car, on the phone, on the laptop, working, working, working. I was never fully present, um, you know, when I was working super hard. So for that to happen to me, I actually see it as a blessing in disguise. I now have a second chance, another opportunity, and I've managed to, to grasp and hold on to Ben's later years. But it, this has also caused a transition in me then as well, um, which is why I've gone into the transition coaching side of things. So I have never been happier, quality of life. Um, I really just can't emphasize the appreciation for the small things in life, just simple and basic and quality is what matters to me now I, you know these days not reaching all my targets and kpis and looking after my team and all of that and perfectionist you know striving to always improve and be the best now i can actually be my true authentic self and i just yeah I, i'm really grateful hugely wow. grateful well no that that's yeah. super powerful yeah i know i do you know what and Unbeknownst to most people nowadays, we all got that uh, big button this guy pushed. Everyone had to stop and reevaluate themselves and start to rethink how they did things with this whole lockdown. And I think, you know what, in, in many ways, it's been a blessing in disguise. I think uh, now people are starting to do more stuff with family. You know, they're starting to appreciate, uh, you know, the people around them and stuff like that and trying to categorize and trying to align everything with the, with, with the nice work work-life balance but yeah I, I suppose it obviously then led you into your own your new career now which is um which is quite a powerful one and you're very proactive in 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 cork with regards mm. entrepreneurial uh, and i've been down to uh, to to see you once or twice 
Um, I, I'm assuming you're still operating out of the same place in the, the hub. Oh, you would have come down to Republic of Work. Yeah. Uh, co really in Cork cool. City. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a really good spot. DC there and his team uh, run a great ship there. But, you know, being kind of present in Cork, I kind of have to support a few more. So I try my best to get around to them. Uh, yeah. But Republic of Work would be, uh, excuse me, the most popular one. But uh, during these times, we've actually changed to online. So now we do it weekly. So before it used to be monthly and it was just a simple Cork Entrepreneurs Network monthly event. Pick a team or a topic, a guest speaker, get everybody engaged and interacting. Uh, you don't just come and sit and watch. I actually make you network. I make you get involved. I, I hopefully bring some energy and implement a few, um, you know, reduce some of the stigmas around the business, have a bit of fun with it, meet like-minded people. But yeah, during COVID, um, that had to go out the door. And now I find myself doing one a week network at noon, Cork Entrepreneurs Network. And the best thing about it is it's not no longer Cork related. It is literally reaching way more outside of Cork. Dublin, there's a lot of people from Dublin come on, Galway, one or two from Limerick, Tipperary, uh, we've had Waterford, um, there were, I think there was somebody rung in from Portugal or something wow. at one time, had Irish roots, they were Irish but now working abroad, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, the whole online thing has, has bigger and better connections, it's been amazing. And do you think that's where you probably will go eventually is kind of, because I know I had a conversation with you many, many moons ago about that, you know, kind of spreading your wings and, and kind of moving outside of Cork. And I know you're, um, it's your hometown and you're not, you don't fancy moving outside of that, but uh, and you <laughs> want to be closer to home rather than moving. But yeah, I think the online thing, as we did say, I suppose, as the big pause button was pressed in the sky, I think it's kind of given us a different option that maybe it's a case of, taking networks to uh, Zoom calls and to, you know, online platforms. Is it something you could consider or would consider? I think so. Uh, this for me has been one of um, the advantages of, I like to call it the lock-in time, you know, rather than lockdown. It's a, mm. a lock-in sounds far more appeasing. <laughs> but it's, it's been one of the, the big, we're stuck in front of screens and midnight last night I was, uh, I'm part of the WBEX, it's the World Business Executive Coaching Summit and we have these implementation mastery sessions and there was somebody from, there's two from California, one from uh, the Philippines and Italy. Um, so I would not have had time to do any of this if it wasn't for me being stuck at home or limited or somewhat restricted so that now has really reminded me and you've now reminded me of it's time to I think as soon as Ben has leaving cert out of the way in education and has a good has a good grounding in life and we can say so long to each other I, I really would like to explore um, and experience other types of cultures other types of ways of doing things um, just being connected right now globally with other coaches, it's fascinating actually how different we can be mm. and how different the mindset in America, which is quite open, to we'd say a European mindset, which we are quite closed. Mm -hmm. So um, it's all of that stuff. I am just, it's, yeah. I can't wait. It's let me at it. I just, yeah. I really can't wait. Yeah, but I think great. online will be a nice stepping stone uh into all of that yeah it's building those bridges and i suppose who's the target market then who would be your target market i don't really have a target market i think i uh, there's a certain niche and I, I think the entrepreneurial mindset or innovative mindset for me entrepreneur is all about your mindset it's not about setting up a business or taking a risk or making a profit it's that type of creative willing to go through change and put themselves out there, um, including the fear of failure, imposter syndrome, all of that. I think it's more mindsets um, that I like working with. I have, in the last two years, really explored, and I get this, to, I, I managed to do this through my pro bono coaching as well. And especially being back in university, I 
tried, you know, those retirees, I tried, you know, graduates, I tried teenagers, um, you know, I, I've, um, whereas direct provision centers, I have really kind of gone around just to experience as broad based as I can. And I have to say there, I don't have a target. I think for me, it's, you'll always connect with the right person. You mm. know, it's, if it's for you or not. Yeah. Um, I am, I have my boundaries. I don't just coach everybody. If I feel something's not right, I go with my intuition. Um, and it's about working and collaborating with the right people as well. Yeah. And, and uh, in terms of, I suppose, kind of getting people then to focus in on their own branding, I suppose that's a huge part of the, the coaching aspect of it, is it? It's massive. The branding of you and how you represent yourself, how you're portraying yourself, what is your message? It's not really a digital marketing type of a strategy. Mm. It's more of a personal strategy. And you can create ABC or X, Y, and Z, and you can have three, four, five companies, but who are you behind it? What are your values? What is your mission? What is your vision? Uh, what is your social responsibility even, you know? Um, so the branding of you is super important. And I think right now during COVID, anybody with a good solid reputation um, should be doing really well through all of this. It's like any recession you know it kind of removes the cowboys yeah. um and you know hard work decent hard working um coaching is all about giving back mm. as well you know you're supporting you're almost like a, you're serving somebody else mm. to become what they deserve to be um so it's that kind of a facilitative role as well but um hugely rewarding it's yeah and i suppose um, you know a lot of people like the idea of being an entrepreneur but I, i'm not quite sure that the title fits or is fitting to everyone uh, have you found that yourself that you know just some people just aren't cut out for it what would you recommend or what would you see as a trait in someone who's you know okay that person's got it now there's they're, they're going to be able to make it here in this entrepreneurial world i think there's several traits hard working um is definitely number one um somebody somebody who is willing to develop and evolve and move and change um not to be stuck because with entre with entrepreneurism it's constantly evolving it's constantly moving especially with the involvement of technology and the way businesses are going and um for me you know they would have to be kind of the top three traits uh the reputation the respect the the discipline that comes with this you're you're gonna put in 18 to 20 hour days mm. um you know to begin with and that's where the hard working it's not a matter of sitting down and doing a b and c it's you have to juggle an awful lot of balls in the air and sometimes more than one or two at the same time and being vision for and being focused as well um and vigilant there, there's just so much there's so much there jason but it really is down to your thinking and the mindset that comes with it you're right you either have it or you don't and i don't think it's something that you can grow into mm. and those that feel oh i want to be an entrepreneur when you ask them the reasons why what is it that you know, takes your fancy, what is that attracts you to entrepreneurism? So if they don't have those answers, then it's just a word. Yeah, I think there's a lot in the chaos as well of that. And I know you're talking about it, they're juggling lots of balls in the air. And I think you're right. I, I think the hours that are put in, like, I mean, your typical nine to five, you're, you go to work, you, you come home and you switch off essentially and somebody else worries about all the other bits and pieces. Um, now, obviously, depending on the role you're in and what position you're in within the company, and, and I, I imagine that even when you were working in HR, you still got a lot of things you're organizing from payrolls to uh, holidays to sick leaves to whatever issues are arising. So it, there's quite a lot, and you can be switched on quite a lot of the time, but it's for somebody else. I suppose with an entrepreneur, it's all for you, and everything you do is in the future that you're going to see for yourself, really. But I think there's a lot of chaos there, isn't there? And trying to decipher, 
um, where to prioritize things. Um, would you have any advice on someone kind of starting, um, trying to get themselves into that zone or trying to get themselves to prioritize the first things to do? I think the first things to do is, is probably talk to people, get your knowledge, you know, share, share, you know, get some mentoring. Um, that would probably be the first thing to do, De depending in what context we're, we're in now and what age bracket we're in as well. Um, but knowledge is key and you may have a great idea and you may have massive strengths in certain areas, mm. but then you might be able to tick all of those boxes so there could be some blind spots or weaknesses so you might need to gain expert advice or some other sort of specialist information um so for me it's to get out there and start talking start talking to those that inspire you start talking to those who have been there done that start talking to those who don't do it well because those who don't do it well have an awful lot of lessons to share with us. Oh, no. Don't go for the perfectionist, the, no, you know, no. the Richard Branson's and all of that, no. you know, it's, it's, you know, you really kind of have to talk to be yourself, yeah. anybody, be any normal Joe. So any, any small shop business owner, talk to them uh, because my goodness, do they work hard and they have staff and stock and they can give you a good business acumen knowledge. And mm -hmm. then, right up to different types of corporations and organizations. And I think here in Ireland, we are incredibly lucky. We are very much people oriented and we're all about helping and supporting each other. So in Ireland, we are extremely lucky to have, to be able to go to somebody and talk to them, pick up the phone to them or reach out to them. So I think if you've got the courage to do that, you have the potential and the courage to go an awful long way. Yeah, I know. I love it. I love it. I, you know what? I think it's, it is all actually kind of leading back to whole uh, networking uh, and attending some of these networks as well, because you're going to get a lot of information and speaking to uh, different people across different platforms. Um, so yeah, I think I can see, I can see the attraction to it. And I always enjoy, um, meeting and greeting people and, and, you know, listening, uh, I suppose their life lessons as well. And it's amazing. Some of the stories and some people, some crazy stories, uh, and some people who may, you've, you've said, God, they made it. They had a, a top end job, CEO, a flush bank accounts and a whole lot. And they give it all up to do something that they were passionate about and they love and, the smile on their face, the minute you meet them is off the charts. It's incredible. Um, yeah, I, I think um, the hardest part of all of this is to stay driven and stay focused once you, once you commence it. Because the old cliche is if you give up a 95 to work 99 when you, become a, when you get into business for yourself and so on. And I think it's so true. You never really switch off. For yourself, Laura, staying motivated and switching off. What do you do? Okay, switching off, I don't do very well. Um, so let's just get that one out of the way. Um, <laughs> and still <laughs> swiftly moving on. I do, I do try to switch off. It's, I was really good at it pre-COVID. Uh, during COVID, I, I've lost the ability to switch off. However, in saying that, I'm now at the very end of my HDIP, so I have a whole research project to hand in and a final submission, um, and it's busy times right now. So it's harder to switch off. Uh, I still will take a day off a week. I worked bank holiday Monday, I worked on Sunday, but I did get out into nature on Saturday, um, I'm, I need nature, you know, I'm living in the city, mm. but you know, within five kilometers, there's lots of wooded areas and there's lots of, there's lots of green and grass. And so that would probably be the first thing. So maybe talk to me post COVID about switching off more because hopefully I have implemented it back to, to normal. What was the second question you, oh, motivated, yeah. um, motivated. What keeps me motivated? There's loads of things. So exercise, sleep, food are, are the first for me, the, the fundamentals um, to physically release, especially if you're stuck in front of a screen all the time. Mm -hmm. But when I'm feeling demotivated or down, 
I have my little groups that I can go to. It's being able to reach out to those who understand and get you. And it's like, I'm struggling right now, or I'm really tired, or I'm not feeling very productive, or I don't know, do I want to continue to do this anymore? And it's just to kind of have little circles. So I have a little circle of coaches. I have a little circle of college colleagues. And I have a little circle of business friends. Uh, and then I've got my own friends as well. So I've kind of got my little circles that when the going gets tough or if Laura's not firing on all cylinders, they, they really do. Uh, they do, really do rally around. Um, and it could just be one text. Mm. And it's like, that works. Yes, mm. great. And do you recognize so, those symptoms in yourself when, when things start to, to, to falter? Much better. Um, definitely, I feel in the last 12 months, whether it's kind of delving more into the psychology element. For me, the, the college course is tough and is, as timely as it is. There's been lots of personal development through that course as well. Lots of self-awareness. There's a whole module on mindfulness as well and how that works. Um, but for me, my self-awareness has really rocketed this year. So definitely before I got sick, I would have been very tuned out, uh, very tuned in more to others and looking after them and putting them first and putting the organization first. Whereas now I really do see it. I know when I wake, you know, I kind of know by the, the quality of sleep I've had. And actually the, the last kind of couple of months, the first thing I do is don't even reach for my phone. I get up, I'm out of bed, I'm walking. It's to, to get out, get that fresh air. I, I don't drink tea or coffee anymore before 12 o'clock. That would be a new thing for you to hear. Um, you know, it's, it's fresh air and a walk and see will that work. And more often than not, then when I'm on that walk, I'll pick up the phone to somebody and vice versa. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a one way thing. It's a two way thing. So yeah, no, that I, was, I, I, I was just I was kind of leading on to a question I had in my mind was would you, how you start your day, your morning, because I find that my morning routine is, is so important to me. And it's the one thing that keeps me fired up. I, I, I've won the rest of the day once I can get this down. And there's days you get up there and you don't feel entirely happy about doing it, but you do it anyway. Um, and it's quite simple. It, it could be just a case of getting out, just, you know, as you say, back to nature, sit down and just listen to the, the sounds of the birds and whatever it is around you. Um, it might sound a bit woo-woo to people, but you know what? It's crazy because just for that moment, you've got your own thoughts. And staying away from the phone, I, I don't touch it for the first hour. I, I truly believe in that because it, it has it has a leading um I suppose you, you just go into everyone else's world and bar your own and, and then you start, you know, living their world rather than just kind of gathering your own thoughts and giving yourself to to, to. but for you obviously um that's important too and I, I imagine and, and I know I haven't spoken to you past that health is a, a very key factor for you and a very important factor for you. Um but your morning then would like, would you get up in the morning and try and get out first before you start anything or would you go straight into it? No, I literally up walking. Um, I literally just, I brush my teeth. I don't even brush my hair. I brush my teeth, <laughs> the, the casual clothes are on and I'm out. I will try to get a half an hour to an hour in, um, depending. And that's me switching off. Sometimes I play music. Sometimes I don't. Uh, I like first thing in the morning. It's quiet. There's not that many people around. And I just kind of get to walk off the day before or the night before or I'm starting afresh. And I come back, then I have my shower and then I'm into, into my routine. Mm. Um, sometimes I get a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of notifications or messages because since you and I last met, actually, I partnered with an American firm. So I'm on a lot of American time as well. Um, and then you've got your social media and your normal stuff that goes on here. But all of that can build up in your notification settings. And sometimes it's like, oh, that's, that's gone really long now. And I might get a little bit overwhelmed, but I just have to take a breath, stop. You'll get to it. Yeah. Right now we're right now we're switching off. It's important to disconnect to reconnect. Mm -hmm. If that makes yeah. sense, a hundred percent. And do you um, find a time block and works for you? Do you are you able to manage that well, or do you find that sometimes it can be a bit chaotic? 
I flourish better under routine and a strict routine. If I have to be here, have to do this. If I'm left to my own devices, my own personal organization. I get distracted quite easy. Mm. So during COVID, um, that's something that I've been really trying to work at actually. And I'm struggling with it. And that's then tends to be where the busyness might creep in because mm. I mightn't finish one thing and I'm like an octopus and I'll go to the next thing and, oh, now I'm going to put the dinner on or the phone is going or, you know, so I'm really, that's a work in progress for me, but I much preferred pre-COVID where I had a very tight, Mm. I I perform well under pressure and I had a very tight schedule and it, it literally rolled. I was usually rushing and racing, but that kind of suited me better, to be honest rather than being left to my own devices. But schedule is important. And do you think that's because other people were forcing you to keep that structure rather than you having to keep it yourself? Is it, yeah. That's really what it was, was it? I think so, because you have to show up. You, your, your onus really is on them again, more so than myself. I like being busy. Um, I don't do well anyway, having a, a lot of time to myself. But I think when you... when you kind of get up in the morning. I always assess it the day before anyway. Okay, I have to be over in this location, let's say from half eight to 11. And then I've got to come over here and teach this person. And I have a session here and then I have a session here. and I've got to take this call or I have an online, you know, it's the phone more or less. Um, that's all scheduled. But being at home where you might have, where you're not in the car traveling and mm. you've got that little bit of extra space, the phone tends to be, in my hand okay. you know so whether i'm on phone calls messaging social media um i find that they're quite distracting so yeah, it can be uh, so yeah like I, I am just cognizant of the fact as well that um you know i'm i'm quite conscious of, of taking time away from what i'll give myself slots usually 45 minutes to an hour slot and that's it i'll move away from it regardless of what happens and and even if I have someone ringing in or doing whatever or whatever's happening, I'll try and keep, give myself 15, 20 minutes downtime so I can get back to it again then. But what do you do for yourself to relax then? What is it you find that really um, relaxes you? Do you just get a chance just to, it's, you know, and it helps to recharge the batteries? Yeah, I think it's been really busy lately. So I definitely aim to have one lazy morning a week and that lazy morning, there's no plan whatsoever. There is nothing. I might hop on the phone. I might pick up a book. I might go for a walk. I might make a cup of tea and go back to bed. Mm-hmm. I might go out and do the garden. It is just whatever I feel Lord, like I do. doing. Yeah. yeah. It's usually a Sunday morning. Um, it's morning until about 12. So <laughs> it's literally just no plan whatsoever. It is constantly free so i wake up when i like do what i like because i'm governed by my schedule anyway Mm -hmm. and then it's to kind of have one day off as well where i get to meet my friends and get out and connect so we have been meeting up to go for walks either on a saturday or a sunday depending social distance we go off up into the woods or we go we go find something or we go to a farmer's market sure i love it yeah, and, and there's plenty of beautiful spots in Cork. That's a certainty. As as a single mom, then in business, and obviously with Ben, he's 16 now. He's in, um, I suppose, prime years, and and uh, between sport and exams and whatnot. Uh, how how have you found it? How have you found that operating? Um, I suppose I know no different, Jason. So you know, I probably take it for granted that that's another ball for me to juggle so to speak it's easier the older that he gets definitely mm-hmm. in the earlier years uh, quality childminder was key there um you know he's he's literally just finished his fifth year exams so to kind of have us both under the same roof for me to see actually what he's like under this sort of pressure um it was phenomenal to see i now get what his teachers have been have been saying because he just seems to glaze over and he's he's gone he switches off whereas me i'm plugged into it and i I wear to go when i'm under pressure um but yeah it's it's challenging 
and rewarding but for me I know no different so mm. I am um, we have a great relationship we are good buddies um, there's even sometimes he'll even criticize sometimes he might hear me on a call or he'll say why are you saying stuff like that and I'm going why are you listening you know it's he's like that's just don't say stuff like that and I'm like you know so I go to him for advice as well sometimes oh. I love yeah, it. especially yeah, especially if I'm feeling something personal is is or if I'm not getting it right, it's he can be a good sounding board. He's it's a nice generation, mm. um, but yeah, I mean Ben has two goals in life, and a he wants to be like you actually. He wants to get into his own fitness business. He wants to run it himself, or he wants to join the army. Yeah. So. Wow. Interesting yeah, times I, I ahead. Think, I think you had mentioned it at one stage, right? He was interested in Coast Guard and uh, kind of that area as well at one stage. I don't know if he ever kind of looked any further into that. But uh, yeah, he's, he's very well grounded anyway. I had met him and uh, he's, a, he's a very, very cool kid. Uh, right. I, it's very hard to phase him now. I, I, I imagine that it's calm and collect, you know, and uh, but you know what? You need someone like that too um, around you because life is very chaotic and um i suppose being entrepreneurs we can be quite chaotic and everything is switched on all the time and um i'm very conscious of it because obviously you're trying to promote health and well-being and you know keep people in, in check and and keep them to check in with themselves so we don't do that too often um so i i, I that's why for me i was saying at the start that the routine is important that i it just forces me it's almost as if I have my, or I'm holding myself accountable for certain things and that if I don't do it, I know I'm going to run into trouble later on or, you know, you're just going to make bad decisions. You're going to feel that little bit of uh, brain fog. And um, I feel so much better when I get out, get exercise, get some fresh air, uh, spend some time with the kids and then back into to full on uh, business mode, you know, but uh, I've actually learned to say no, which is, which is uh, huge for me. Uh, really yeah i it's it's just one of those things that you know you, you're going yeah no problem i'll get that sorted and before you know it you're like you were saying yourself there's notifications coming in there's calls coming in there's and and like you i have i have clients across the globe and you know you're trying to be there for them and try and stay up for them you know and uh and everyone else is uh on quiet shh don't make any noise stay quiet i'm on a call or whatever it is you know and lockdown has really shown that um as well and i i feel that with 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 the kids and things just because you're in a room at the end of the house they just see it as a room at the end of the house they don't see it as an office or daddy's working you know whereas when they're at school or um you can either stay in the house or stay in the office or you can go and you go to a hotel and you can you know, you can sit down, you can have a conversation with someone and you can kind of disengage yourself and separate yourself from the, the family home. But uh, like yourself, I, all, I, I, I was considering the lockdown. I was in lockdown, not out. You know, we're, we're, it's far from it. I think people have been thriving in it um, and massive research now, even in terms of people's health and well-being. And people are starting to cook at home now. Um, they didn't before. There was a lot of orders in Chinese and Chinese and, and McDonald's and all sorts of things and all the takeaways that are good every now and then. But people were just using them as convenience because they just couldn't be bothered to cook. But now there's a massive rise and surge in that. Um, so people are really uh, starting to come out of themselves. So I, And they've reinvented um, themselves amazingly. I, I, every time I talk to someone, I'm more and more impressed at human human beings uh how we're able to create things and come up with stuff and i'm going wow i never thought of that it's brilliant <laughs> yeah and they're being creative but for for the likes of ourselves i suppose um staying motivated and staying positive can be hard sometimes because you're 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 on you're on full tilt all the time if you were to offer some advice i suppose to someone starting off in all of this um you know, starting from scratch. I know we spoke about networking and things like that, but to keep themselves grounded, to help keep themselves, I suppose, sane and not get overwhelmed. Because while you thrive on it, Laura, uh, I might, I know I myself, I have to disengage after a certain period of time um, because I find that if it's, if it's um, a lot of stuff coming in constantly, 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 it's that chatter, constant chatter, chatter, chatter. 
and I find that um, the stress levels will start to rise. I feel myself getting um, disengaged from everything else. I find that I can make mistakes. Uh, and, but for someone like yourself, Danny, you might thrive on that. Where's that happy medium? I, I suppose is the real question I'm trying to ask. You know, what would you offer advice if you were to coach someone on that? Um, balance, you know, it's what is motivating you or what is this drive to get you to, to keep making you go, 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 go. Um, because you're not going to reach burnout anyway. There's only so long that you can kind of cope or maintain uh, that. So you've got to put yourself first as an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, you're a solopreneur and you've got to put yourself first. So you can't pour from an empty jug type of thing, you know, so you've got to really mind yourself. Self-care is super important. And it comes down to those basics. I mean, people see them as very basic and they take them for granted. But for me, sleep, if, if I don't get a good night's sleep, yeah. I'm good to nobody. It's you, you eat unhealthy, you'll go for the extra coffee or you're just not yourself. I didn't have a great night's sleep last night. I don't know why. I think it was just quite windy and the windows that were open. But yeah, I didn't have a great night's sleep. So I don't feel great today. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of right. Something's going to have to give today because I'm, you know, my, my cylinder isn't going to be able to maintain. So it's being able to recognize those. Um, taking your downtime, staying educated, keeping connected and minding yourself while still remaining, you know, your vision and solution focused as well. Yeah, I love it. I love the idea there that you just said as well that, you know, um, just because you're not firing all cylinders today and you had a bad sleep, because sleep is just, it's one of my, I love the, the topic on sleep. Uh, it's something I've gone into in major detail. Um, but I think the power of sleep and what people don't understand about it is, 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 is fundamental to survival and, you know, everything from obesity to uh, brain function, you know, that as we talked about brain fog and stuff like that, the following day and just being decisive. But I like the idea, the fact that you said as well, that you just say, well, look, uh, today is one of those days I'm going to have to slightly write off certain things. I'm going to have to take a step back. And I think that's probably key, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, for instance, today, I think I got about maybe three or four hours sleep last night where I just gave, I think I finished about half 12. It takes me a while to wind down. So probably two-ish, half two-ish, I probably fell asleep. And being a half six, I, I kind of gave up really. But today, either the food shopping goes out the door or my college work goes out the door. Something is going to have to change so that's one good thing about working for yourself as well you've got that flexibility mm. um and thankfully ben is in jung you know he's he can look after himself as well or mm. i'm sure if i really needed him to go do a food shop he'd go do it but would it be healthy is the other <laughs> god only knows it'll come back into the house but um but you know i need to kind of set up uh, my food shop for the rest of the week so yeah it's just being able to have flexibility as well and have psychological flexibility that is super important um you know with your thoughts and and your schedule and stuff like that so that's being open yeah i think allowing yourself that moment of weakness i think is really important isn't it and recognizing oh yeah yeah. Yeah. I used to give myself such a hard time yeah. for that. I think it's an Irish thing. I'm Aries and I'm female as well. So, you know, I'm just snookered. I really used to give myself such a hard time. And it's actually through coaching. Did I I think I had one day I had this kind of aha moment and it's like, whoa, 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 you really need to start practicing what you preach here. It's I really had that mirror moment where, wow, you know, it's and the one thing that I take hugely important with my coaching is reflection, mm. reflecting on the relationship and the session uh, and my client, but also on myself. Mm. So I've become more aware. I, I am very focused and very grounded and I keep checking in with myself during a session. Mm. However, when I'm not coaching, I don't do that. Ah. So it's only recently have I realized why aren't I doing this when I'm not working, when, I, when I'm not, not coaching for, you know, so it's now that I have that awareness because I've taken the time to reflect on it, 
at least now I can take, you know, implement some measures to improve that. Yeah, that's powerful. That's really good. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. I think that's the, the learning for any of us, isn't it? And I think what you said, even going back to, you know, the people who have struggled in their, uh, I suppose, plight to, to become successful. That's where the learning is, isn't it? Making those mistakes. But I think if you give enough advice over a period of time, you start kind of listening to yourself eventually. <laughs> I, I think that's what happens. You know, you got to be an example. And, and it, it can be tough sometimes because we kind of, we wear our own suit and we, this is who we are and we got to present, you know, and you got to present yourself the best all the time because people rely on you for it. I'm not going to hold you much longer. I'm going to ask you one crazy question for you and see if you see what you're going to tell me. Um, might try a little bit of a wobble, you never know. Um, if you had a superpower, what would it be? If I had a superpower, what would it be? Um, <laughs> okay, it's going to be quite different. I am quite envious of those who can just fall asleep at the drop of a hat. For me, I need to wind down. So my superpower would be to have a switch on, off. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant brilliant stuff. okay laura listen thank you so much you've been absolutely amazing as always and so insightful you're very welcome uh, the knowledge that you have is always incredible and i i i always motivated after speaking to you so listen thank you so much and best of luck with wow. all of your future endeavors and uh we'll definitely have you on again soon and I'm, I'm gonna definitely visit the the republic once i uh uh get out of all of this uh lockdown or extended uh boundaries are allowed to to, to move outside our five to 20k whatever well, so how about because we moved online the cork entrepreneurs network is at noon every wednesday we network at noon and it's an hour so you can zoom in super that's exactly what i'll do and anyone yeah. listening please zoom in <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah where where can um people get a, a hold of that linkedin laura yeah, you can go find me on LinkedIn or you've got the Cork Entrepreneurs Network page on Facebook and you book your space through Eventbrite. So you any of those three platforms um, or if you follow me on Instagram, you know, all of that. It's But LinkedIn is probably the, the, yes. the platform that I use the most. Okay, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Listen, thanks a million, Laura. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a million, Jason.